a very brief story of the project. Uh, the Sintap project uh, was approved at the end of um, the 2018, in November, and uh, officially started on the 1st June 2019. Uh, I am the coordinator, uh, together with uh, uh, Carlo Bibiani. We belong to the University of Pisa, um, to the Department of Agricultural Sciences, Food and Environmental, and uh, myself, and the Department of Veterinary Sciences, uh, Carlo. And also, uh, and a big role in the project uh, is played by Dr. Baldassare Fronte, who is a colleague of uh, Carlo Bibiani at the uh, Department of the Veterinary Sciences. And uh, as you can see in this slide, uh, many, many persons are involved in the project with different backgrounds, because indeed we <laughs> I discovered the, that the project is very difficult to, to manage because uh, we need a lot of uh, expertise and competencies. And, uh, Move to the other slide. Uh, of course, there are other partners, uh, very expert in their field of uh, interest. Um, we have a partner from the University of Bologna, the team leader, a professor Daniele Torregian. Uh, then we have uh, um, Dr. Jacopo Bacenetti at the University of Milan. And so we, there are three Italian partners. And uh, another important partner is uh, in RAE, in France, the team leader is Dr. Joel Aubin. And uh, they are working together with uh, the Lycée de la Mer and the uh, Du Littoral, Boursefranc de Chapus in France, and the team leader is Dr. Vincent Gaillet. Um, our friends in Turkey, uh, at the Mediterranean Fisheries Research Production and Training Institute in Antalya, and the team leader, Dr. Mehmet Ali Turan, Coser. Then there is a, a partner in Malta, Ministry for Agriculture, Fisheries and Animal, Animal Rights. Um, the team leader is uh, uh, Marcel Ajus. And finally, uh, last but not least, <laughs> because he's uh, in some way is the father of the project, Dr. Rainer Linke in Germany um, is the, 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 the CEO of, uh, of the, the responsible of the partner Corolla. Um, in, in this slide, uh, I um, summarize very, very briefly the conceptual framework of the SINTA project. Uh, the main goal of the project uh, is to study in a closed loop multi-trophic chain in seawater uh, for the production of sea fish and plants for fresh consumption or for industrial processing, for instance, for the extraction of TV ingredients of nutrition or medicinal interest. The objective of the project is to, to evaluate to what extent an integrated diet with unicellular algae, filter feeders, and other detritivorous organisms can replace the traditional diet of fish consisting of feed produced industrially, which has a significant environmental impact due to the overexploitation of the world fish resources and the extensive cultivation of cereals and legumes. Uh, the, the Syntap system uh, integrates an aquaculture plant with an hydroponic culture of plants capable of growing and developing at the salinity levels typical of seawater. For instance, in our system, the salinity is 25 grams per liter. The concept uh, uh, underlying the Syntap system uh, is the separation of each trophic compartment uh, and the use of wastewater and effluents coming, for instance, from one or more compartments as a nutritional sources and basic elements of the life cycle. The Syntap system must be able to use different units for primary producer, for instance, algae, uh, crop plants, 
in our case, of course, due to the, to the, the use of, of seawater, we are growing allophytes or allotolerance glycophytes. Uh, breeding units for feeder feeders and detritivorous organisms, for instance, uh, mussel, uh, marine worms, crustaceum, and so on. And of course, fish, uh, sea bream, sea bass, uh, all interconnected in a closed system. We have to admit that the, the project is oriented to the fish production because of the, of the, the, the much uh, greater uh, commercial value. According to this uh, schema, wastewater and production from one level of the multi-trophic cultivation system are recycled and used, becoming the inputs for another level, thus replacing the current fish feed with alternative ingredients such as algae, polychaetes, and other feeder feeders uh, and detritivorous organisms. Um, the, the, the actual input in the seed tap systems are fertilizer, uh, which can be supplied directly or indirectly to the, to the algae, uh, light, uh, also for crop plants, water and energy for the operation of the, of the wool plant. Light and nitrogen and phosphorus are needed for the growth of both algae and plants. Different water sources will be tested. Uh, sea water for, uh, for sure, but also brackish water and uh, greenhouse runoff to grow uh, algae. In the latter case, uh, we can consider Sintep a sort of a treatment a system to treat the wastewater rich in nitrogen and phosphorus, which can then feed the algae. Um, so uh, that's the main uh, the main uh, goal of the project. To the best of our knowledge, a system uh, a syntax system was never implemented with the aim at partial or wool replacement of raw material, fish meal and fish oils, vegetable proteins, so on, by means of microalgae and filtering uh, species in the diet for for fish species grow in marine aquaculture. That's the, the main difficulties uh, to, to me for the project. And um, uh, in, this, uh, in this slide is uh, very briefly uh, illustrated the, the, the main principle uh, underlying the, the Sintam project. From the uh, point of view of the activity, uh, there are three main uh, um, uh, activities. First, there is uh, uh, some experiment that are, uh, are and will be conducted to uh, evaluate the performance of the four prototypes installed in France, Italy, Turkey, and Malta. The system in Malta is under construction in these, in these days. And uh, the evaluation will uh, consider the, the production of food, the use of energy, water, and other resources like, for instance, uh, uh, fertilizer. And uh, then the project will assess the economic sustainability of the, of the wool system. And also the life cycle assessment, the assessment of energy, and finally, the, we have to give uh, uh, um, and a wool evaluation of the uh, um, real application of the Sintap system to a commercial uh, farm in the sector of aquaculture. And uh, um, I think that uh, uh, we can uh, explain much better uh, the, 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 the content of the project uh, by um, following the, the, the next uh, presentation. Uh, in, there is, a, before the, the coffee break, uh, uh, four different speakers will uh, uh, describe the Sintap systems installed in France, Italy, Turkey, or in progress in Malta. And after the coffee break, uh, uh, you will receive uh, some uh, information about the work uh, um, we are doing uh, uh, about the, the uh, sustainability, the economic and environmental sustainability of the Sintap system. Thank you very much. And uh, I please uh, Joel 
to start with uh, his speech, his presentation of the activity um, um, performed in France. Please, Joel, I give you the, the, the screen. Thank you, Alberto. Can you hear me? Yes. OK. So and can you see the presentation? Yes. Yes. OK. OK, OK, I try to make it better. OK, so thank you very much. I'm pleased to be here to present you uh, today uh, what we what we are doing in France. Uh, this presentation is a common presentation. There are few authors there, but there are other people that are involved in there, and I will explain, explain it to you. So, first of all, I, I wanted to go back to the rationale of, of the prototype we, we developed. So, as it has been presented just before, despite the increasing demand in seafood, there are several factors who impaired the, the development of uh, aquaculture in Mediterranean countries. I highlight only three of them. One of them is the global change, uh, especially climate change with the increasing frequency of uh, warm periods uh, during the years. Uh, the prices volatility of seafood and, and especially for their inputs, and uh, uh, it is the case for the, for, for, for the ingredients of the aqua feeds, uh, such as uh, fish meal and fish oil, the availability of resources that are in competition with human or, or livestock systems. There, is, there are also environmental impacts uh, as there are emissions of pollutants uh, from aquaculture systems in the surrounding uh, aquatic ecosystems. Uh, there is the question of the settlement of, of, the, of this activity on sensitive areas, especially on coastal areas that have uh, specific biodiversity and have a specific role uh, in the in the ecosystems. Uh, aquaculture uses also fragile resources uh, such as fish meal and fish oil and uh, they contribute uh, as all the livestock and uh, agriculture systems uh, to, to climate change. Therefore there is the uh, uh, balanced perception by consumers and citizens of uh, products from aquaculture as they can consider it as another kind of intensive livestock systems. And uh, there are still the comparison with fisheries that are considered more natural sources for aqua, aqua feed. Uh, and the competition uh, for access to coastal area, especially with tourism in Mediterranean countries. In uh, previous, uh, in, in, in previous uh, studies, uh, we, we propose different principles to drive the development of agroecological agro uh, aquaculture system and especially pond systems. These, uh, these principles are that if we want to drive the, the development uh, in, in uh, agroecological way, we have to think about the productivity of the system because it has to stay uh, it has to remain a productive system. This system should be robust and resilient uh, facing the, the global changes in, in, in particular. It should have natural and cultural values. Be, they should be, it should be environmentally friendly and uh, it should use more local and natural resources. And uh, from this objective, there are also uh, interface characteristics such as stability, biodiversity support, nature conservation, recycling, and efficiency. From all this, we think that one of our objectives was to propose specific integrated multitrophic aquaculture system. And uh, especially we, in a previous uh, study, we, we designed a, integrated multi-profit aquaculture in, in, in this way. Um, it started by, by feed that is given to fish. And from this fish, uh, you have dissolved mineral, dissolved organic matter and particulate organic matter that can be uh, used by primary producers such as phytoplankton, algae, aquatic plants, or secondary producers such as zooplankton, insects, uh, invertebrates in general, 
and filter feeders such as shellfish and some kinds and sometimes fish also, and also deposit feeder uh, such as crustacean worms and uh, echinoderms. And for and in in this uh, in, in our in our project in Syntap in Syntap project, we concentrate our our study on algae. Uh, um, bivalves and uh, and crustacean. So, what is the rationale of the prototype? If we if we keep this uh, print the principle I present to you before, we wanted them to be productive. Uh, so, we wanted to produce species that could have a good yield and have economic sense. So, for this, we chose uh, oysters, uh, clam. Prone, sea bream, and ulva. Uh, we wanted it to be robust and resilient. That means that behind we wanted to produce uh, several species to balance market variation, and uh, we want we wanted to using to use robust species adapted to fluctuating environment. We consider that it should have natural and cultural value by using species having cultural and gastronomic value and rear in a traditional way, and in our case, in uh, traditional oyster ponds. We wanted it also to be environmentally friendly by recycling the nutrient, closing the water loop, and uh, using low level and ener of energy. And at the end, uh, one of our objectives was to use local and natural resources using low level of feed with no fish meal and fish oil, with no imported ingredients such as soybean or um, from, from, South, uh, from South America or, or um, palm oil, uh, this kind of ingredients we didn't want. And therefore we chose to compensate uh, a plain vegetable uh, feed with the local discard mussels. So from this uh, last point, uh, before we start the wall system, we make a, a preliminary re, uh, study. Oh, sorry, just sorry, just before I wanted to present to you the partnership. So the partnership in this project is in, in France, is from uh, INRAI uh, at Rennes. Uh, we are specialists in, uh, in environmental assessment and design of agri and aquaculture systems. So you have the list of the people that were involved there. And uh, we, associate, we were associated to the Lycée de la Mer, uh, which is, uh, which is uh, near the Oléron, uh, Marraine Oléron area, which, which is the main producing, uh, main area producing oysters in, in France. And this Lycée is a general and technological uh, school and, uh, and they have uh, facilities where we could make uh, our experiment. So the first experiment was the preliminary one. And the question was, is it possible to feed sea bream without fish meal and fish oil and uh, using uh, muscle complementation? So for this, we made a, a, a small experiment with small fish sea breams of uh, seven grams. And there were three groups. Uh, one, were one was fed with commercial feed uh, six days per week. Uh, one was, was uh, fed with only plant-based feed uh, in six, uh, for six days a week. And, and, the, and this, um, and this uh, feed had the same chemical uh, composition than the, than the commercial feed. Uh, and uh, this plant and uh, the third group was fed with the same plant-based feed uh, for five days, and one day they were they were fed with muscle, uh, and we calculated uh, isoenergetic to the uh, to the commercial feed for for one day. So what we can see in this in, in as a result is that. For, uh, um, the, the group of fish that were fed only with vegetable uh, feed had a lower uh, growth than the two others that were very similar. 
uh, and especially the, the one with the muscle plus vegetable feed was equivalent to the commercial uh, feed growth. Nevertheless, um, when, you, when you look at the total uh, polyunsaturated fatty acids, uh, for sure there is a decrease in the, in the groups of, uh, that were fed only with vegetable and vegetable plus muscle. And uh, here there's a huge difference because it was uh, young fish that were fed with a high level of fish meal and fish oil at the beginning. So what was the experimental design? Here is the design. Um, here you have, uh, you have the first pond uh, was number seven, sorry, it's, this is the number we, we had at the beginning, was, um, was uh, okay. we, we put some sea breams, uh, sea breams there, a, a large population of sea breams that was fed with the same uh, vegetable feed and uh, with the, the, the muscle uh, only one once a week uh, to complete to complete the the, the the feed ratio. The second from this pond, the water is going to a second one, where there are there were oysters and the shrimp. Then from this one to the next one, pond number five, where there were oysters and shrimp, and the and then from this one, we go to the pond number four with clam and shrimp. And from this, uh, the water is going back to the to the to the first pond, the, the pond with the sea breeze. The uh, overflow, the overflowing water was going to to another pond who received ulva. From this experiment, uh, one first point is that we learned a lot about the functioning of this kind of ecosystem that was that were not so so easy to, to, to handle. And I wanted to, to, to share, uh, the, for instance, the oxygen saturation uh, uh, into the water. Uh, we made uh, uh, several control for a 24 hour cycle. And here you see that in July, we had, okay, uh, variation that were not, uh, quite, quite important because we were under 70% to 130% uh, of the oxygen saturation into the water. So we have a really variable uh, ecosystem in terms of oxygen, and it is even uh, worse, I would say, uh, in August, uh, especially with high peaks in some of the ponds. And for the pond with the, with the, the fish, here it's the blue one, and you see that it's going under 70%, okay, from 3, three o'clock in the morning to, to uh, 12 o'clock. So we consider this as, uh, okay, very constraint. Uh, const it is a huge constraint for the, for the fish. And this is going also uh, in parallel with uh, the phytoplankton that is one of the explanation of such variations. Uh, and here you can see the evolution of the, the phytoplankton that we had uh, from June to October, the end of the experiment. Um, and, the, and you see the increase of the, of, the, of the phytoplankton concentration that can explain uh, the, the variation we, we can observe. So what are the results? For the sea green, okay. During the first month, we can consider that we had a, 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 an adaptation period that was a, around one month. And uh, this is due because, as I told you before, there were some uh, variation in the, in the environment and quality. And then, uh, and, uh, and uh, you see, we started with quite large fish with over, over 200 grams. But uh, these fish were reared in, uh, in, uh, in clear and, uh, and intensive systems uh, with high level of oxygen. That can explain the fact that when, you, when we change them from this very uh, controlled 
uh, environment to to the pond system they had uh, this uh, this adaptation time but after this they had quite good uh, uh, growth and uh, with uh, quite a, a nice uh, food conversion ratio of 1.9 and the survival rate 90 percent and here again you can you can see that we had a, a decrease in the in, in the total uh, polyunsaturated fatty acid concentration but uh, at a lower level that that what that lower than what we observed for the smallest uh, fish uh, last time okay considering the prone okay uh, we we were satisfied because the growth was correct and uh, the mean weight increased ninefold uh, from the beginning. Uh, we can observe here a uh, high uh, variability due to sexual dimorphism, deformisms. I, I mean by this that the male are uh, half the size, half the size of the of the female. But we had a big problem because in uh, in August uh, or no here just in October uh, we lost all the 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 prawns from the from the pond number six this is the pond just uh, downstream the the fish uh, because of uh, unexpected uh, uh, climatic event with very high temperature uh, low atmosphere atmospheric pressure and uh, okay all the all the the prawn died in this in this pond and the survival rate in pond five and uh, was low, but not so bad in pond number four. We can consider that the, the results from the pond number four can be uh, considered as normal uh, survival rate. But the growth was quite good. If we consider, if we look at the oysters, we observe also a very good group, a very good growth. Uh, here you have the, the shell length. Uh, and some differences between the between the, the the ponds, especially it was a little lower in the pond just downstream the the fish. And uh, the survival rate was uh, ninety percent, well, which is really a good surprise because there is a, a, a summer a summer. Um, uh, disease for for oysters and the, the average in the area it's around 50 percent of survival so it was very good and moreover if you look at the yield the flesh yield in the shell the fill rate uh, was over the standard the standard is around 12 percent to 15 percent and here it reached 22 percent on the and the, in and 18 percent in average so it was very, very high uh, in, in fill rate. And when we look at the clams, it's, it's, not, uh, it's not very different from the, from the oysters. The, the mean fill rate was around 20% at harvest and the survival rate around 70%. Um, but we can expect uh, uh, that uh, they, they suffered from the climatic event uh, also. For the ulva, that was our black point, I mean, uh, there were no production of ulva due to the lack of water movement, we think. So it has to be tested anew with a change in the water loop. So to sum up, okay, we can consider that the results for the sea bream are good. Okay, they, they, they grow quite well with the, with the vegetable and mussel uh, diet. For the shrimp, it's everywhere uh, very good. For the clam, it's very good also. And for the shrimp, it was not so bad, except that we lost uh, one of the pond uh, just uh, uh, just due to the climatic event. And for the ulva, uh, this time it was not. Uh, it was not. It didn't work. Oh, say okay. So as a conclusion uh, about the productive aspect. Yes, we, we obtain a result for, on, on this point of view as the as, and the best was for oyster and the good for clams and shrimp and for and also for for sea green. But a reconception is needed for algae production. 
about the, the robust and, and the resilient objective, yes, foresters, but it has to be consolidated, consolidated for fish, shrimp, and the uh, can. Oh, considering the natural and cultural value, okay, we made a lot of um, samples for the for a biodiversity diagnostic, uh, which is in progress actually. Especially, we we collected the. Um, um, Different uh, the different uh, macro invertebrates in the different uh, compartments, so it's in progress. About the idea of environmentally uh, friendly system, we we had no emission of wastewater during the during the period except at draining, and at draining we had very low level of nutrients emitted into the seawater. And about the question of using local and natural resources. We had good performances of sea breams with vegetable plus muscle feed. Um, considering the perspective now, so we try again. I mean, uh, there, will, there will be a new run of the system in uh, 2021 to confirm the results uh, with uh, a system of probes, of probes for a close monitoring of uh, water quality that is prepared by our colleagues from Bologna. Um, we, we will make a revision of air adduction. Uh, we will may we may add millets to the sea breams. It's not done actually. It's not planned. Uh, we will have hopefully a better management for uh, ulva production, and we will mix oysters and clams in every pond uh, downstream the fish for a better use of the phytoplankton. And uh, we will uh, model all of. We will model all the production system uh, in terms of growth and fate of the nutrient. And we have uh, the objective of dissemination to local uh, producers, to students, to scientists, and to any people that are interested to, into this system. OK, thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Joel. Very interesting presentation. Uh, I have seen that uh, uh, Mr. Vincenzo Scola uh, want to to ask something. Ah, maybe. Uh, please. Please, you can ask questions. Vincenzo Scola. No, probably. Probably not. OK. OK, thank you. Uh, now is the time uh, for the speech by Carlo. Uh, Alberto, yeah, wants yeah. To ask. I, I would have uh, one question for Joel, if possible. Yes, yeah. OK, Otherwise yes. I can ask another, another no, time. No, 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 no. We, we, we have time. We have time. There are two hours in this session. So. No, no, no. <laughs> it's, it's, it will be quick, I'm sure. Uh, so thank you, Joel, for your presentation. Very nice and interesting, full of uh, interesting uh, stimulus. <laughs> and uh, I have a question uh, regarding the feeding program, uh, the plan, the feeding plan you used. And you said that, that uh, for Sibrim, you fed uh, them for five days with the commercial feed, as was one day with the mussels. Is it right? Yes. So, why did you uh, fed uh, mussel just one day per week rather than small amount every day? Okay. Okay, there are small details I didn't give you. Uh, in, the, in the second, uh, in, in the experiment this year, we give the, the mussel raw with the shells. Okay. Okay. So we wanted to be sure that they would not find something else to eat during this day to oblige them to eat the, the muscle, uh, and especially at the beginning. So that's why we had one day uh, with no feed and one day with muscles. OK. During the first month, I think it didn't work very well. But OK, after the first month, they, take the, they took the habit to to crush the, the muscle and to eat them in, in all. That's why we wanted them to have only muscle in one day. Okay. To push them to, to eat the muscle. 
but they like them very well when when they think yeah, yeah, yeah. it's okay <laughs> we are aware of their their preferences because we saw the same uh, issue the same things and uh, yes you are right uh, you didn't um, describe this but it's reasonable that they are lazy so if they can eat feed maybe they are not interested in uh, crushing shells so I, I now i i got uh, it makes sense your choice thank you very much uh, uh, joel thank you uh No one is going to ask uh, any question, so uh, please, Carlo. Yes, uh, hello, everybody. Thank you for attending this webinar. I'm going to uh, show you my presentation. So, um, well, we, we before uh, having a look to the Syntap system built in PISA, uh, uh, I want to clear out some boundary conditions. Um, we, we saw already the Syntap concept, the Syntap scheme, and what uh, the French uh, friends and French partners did in France. So uh, we did uh, another uh, choice, and we wanted to, to test a system built inside a greenhouse. And this is a, a limitation for the environmental condition, because of uh, the temperature uh, that can be um, uh, reached during summer, of course. Uh, to this purpose, we installed a heat pump, a chiller, <laughs> uh, but it's not a commercial uh, choice <laughs> because it takes, uh, it, it takes a lot of energy. The, the other um, uh, boundary condition is that we want to test a simplified solution uh, of the Syntap system installed. And to this purpose, we, we wanted to test the, the substitution of the drum filter with a, a sort of um, concept of large surface settler, uh, provided that we have deposit filter feeder organisms in our system that can do the same job uh, of, of the drum filter and in some ways of the skimmer as well. So uh, here you can see uh, an overall drawing of the system. Uh, we, we have uh, six tanks uh, for fish culture and the water flows from here to the next section that is for deposit filter feeders organisms that are uh, worms, polychaetes in this case, and mussels and oysters. Um, the water flows to a sump and then to a biofilter and then uh, flows to the plant unit uh, where there are halophytes and glycophytes and, and macroalgae. Um, uh, as uh, Alberto told you in advance, uh, the concept of the Syntap starts from the production of microalgae that should feed the filter feeders organisms that in some ways partially they, they can feed fish. So uh, there is a, a microalgae unit here and beside there is a, a, another unit to test uh, the, um, the use of runoff coming from other greenhouses crops. Uh, so uh, we can uh, have a sort of bioremediation of the runoff of other cultures. So here you can see some pictures of the system we, we built uh, in, uh, in the greenhouse at the University of Pisa. Uh, fish tanks with fish, the polychaetes and mussels tanks. Here you can see the, the mussels and the sand where the polychaetes are, um, are um, reared. Uh, and here the plant um, uh, unit and, and the microalgae unit as well. Um, so, um, yeah, to this, uh, I want to very briefly uh, um, some parameters we choose uh, for our system. The maximum fish density in the fish tanks um, we can reach to 10 kilos per cubic meter. It's not so high in a commercial 
uh, fish farm is quite uh, higher, but this is for uh, testing and research. So we want to to limit our uh, biomass, living biomass. Um, the, the other um, parameters, uh, I will say something later, but the detention time is the time water takes to flow, uh, to, to change completely the volume in the tank. So it is, uh, in our case, it, it varies from 40 minutes to one hour, depending from the, the, the water flow uh, coming uh, to the tanks themselves. So, um, yes, be before coming to the fish tank, the water must be degassed. So there, uh, there is a stripping device that is a very simple, uh, a pipe uh, with plastic media to maximize the turbulence inside so we can remove CO2, uh, nitrogen dioxide and something like that from the uh, water. Um, so the water goes to the polycate unit. Uh, the main parameters to be taken into account are the hydraulic load rate uh, that can be seen as an average water speed expressed in millimeters per minute. So the same number you see here. And the, the tension time. So uh, as you can see, we have more tanks for the polycates, so the, the tension time uh, goes up, uh, rises. Uh, it takes more than uh, one hour to flow completely the tank. Uh, the water flows downward, so the sedimentation of organic matter and feed debris is easier. Um, to this regard, the maximum filter organism density is again 10 kilos per cubic meter, and the target density of polycase worms is around 2,000 individual per square meters. Uh, that's uh, the, it's very important to to see uh, how long how long it takes the water to flow out the tank because we need enough time for the settlement of large particles. Well, there is the biofilter, and uh, I want just to to say something about um, uh, the total biomass, uh, the fish biomass. Uh, that can be hosted in our system that is around 30 kilos, 5 kilos per tank. And so we calculated uh, the volume of bioballs uh, necessary to process the, uh, the ammonia uh, dispersed in, into the water by uh, fish metabolism. Uh, about the uh, hydroponic and macroalgae unit, I will say something later, uh, talking about the experiment uh, we run in, in our system. But anyhow, we have one row of tank dedicated to the macroalgae that are ulva rigida, this one, and uh, another is ketomorpha linum. And the other three rows are dedicated to crop species like Salicornia and um, Beta vulgaris, um, that we will see later, and, and Beta cicla, Beta vulgaris cicla. So let's. Um, another um, crucial issue is to uh, control the, the water parameter parameters, and to this extent. Um, Daniele Torregiani from Bologna University will talk later. So I just want to say that there is uh, um, a monitoring system and uh, there is also a controller capable of switching on and off all the pumps, blowers, and um, very important, sending out alarms if some failure, failures of the system happens and also to store the data, just because we are doing research. Uh, uh, to this, um, but another very crucial aspect is to have an emergency generator, because if the, there is a blackout in the grid, uh, the fish cannot survive for, for so long. <laughs> and in fact, we experience uh, a complete uh, the, the, um, a complete death of of our fish uh, during October 
due for uh, due to a blackout, uh, several blackouts in the grid that happened in Pisa. That's it was a very 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 worrying <laughs> um, period for us. So and now I want to talk briefly ab about uh, the researches we uh, we did and we are investigated on and some of them of course are running and we are investigating on this topic that that are optimizing the system and the monitoring facilities and measuring the effects of commercial feed replacement with fresh chopped mussels and now mussels clams and polychaetes in very in the very next future um, the growth performance of the plants, halophytes and glycophytes, and the reproduction performance of the deposit feeder organisms that are uh, polychaetes, in our case, um, Nereis diversicolor, and the bi bioremediation performance of, uh, of the microalgae. Um, Besides, we want to calculate the water and nitrogen balance the energy consumption and, and the life cycle assessment with uh, Joel and um, Jacopo Bacinetti from Milano. Uh, teams, of course, not only uh, two persons. Well, OK, now uh, I want to uh, talk about uh, the, the experiment we run. Of course, I'm talking uh, about the, word, the, the job that um, some groups of uh, some, some of us did. And so if you have some question at the end of my presentation, I, I will uh, I, I will ask them to reply you because they are more expert on plant and uh, animal uh, organisms than I am. So the experiments on halophytes and soil tolerant glycophytes. Um, we did three experiments um, starting from October um, to August last year with different pl plant species uh, which were propagated by seed and grown in floating system uh, to simulate the use of seawater a uh, different amount of uh, synthetic uh, sea salt uh, its name is instant ocean were added to the control nutrient solution the concentration we tested was a zero uh, that is the control, uh, 10, 20, and 30 gram per liter. And the species studied were Portulaca uh, parsley, Beta vulgaris cicla, the uh, Swiss chard, Beta vulgaris maritima, sea beet, and Salicornia europea glasswort. So the first three are glycophytes. Uh, but with high tolerance to salinity. Um, uh, so they are uh, facultative. Uh, also, there is a facultative halophyte, uh, while glasswort is an uh, obligate halophyte. In experiment one, uh, which was conducted in autumn winter season, uh, the crop yield decreased with increasing salinity. Uh, talking about parsley and switch, uh, Swiss chard, sorry. Um, so the parsley was very sensitive to salinity, uh, uh, so above 10 gram per liter, the, the, the production dropped in, in a very high way. Um, but the Swiss, Swiss chard uh, was, uh, has a very good uh, response. In the experiment two, uh, we tested Swiss chard and sea beet uh, at zero and 10 gram per liters. Uh, the, the results were similar to experiment one. Um, the, in experiment one, the, the um, uh, glass wort uh, grew uh, more in the uh, enriched salt nutrient solution than uh, respect to the control. Uh, it means that the Salicornia europea is an obligate allophyte, so it needs salt to, uh, 
to grow and to yield properly. Uh, the practical implication of these results are interesting uh, because it can grow even with low level of salt, uh, with concentration of 5, 10 micromoles of uh, sodium chloride, uh, that is uh, an NaCl. Uh, because we can find this concentration in many irrigation water in Mediterranean regions. Uh, therefore, the salicornia could be successfully cultivated in closed loop hydroponics with available water resources with uh, low or moderate salt content without any addic addiction of salt. Uh, so, this is an interesting result. Uh, another Interesting result is that um, provided that salicornia can grow up to 30 or 35 gram per liter of salt, um, it can grow even if the nutrient, con the, the concentration of nitrogen is low. And as you can see here, it grows in the same way uh, with one micromole or 10 micromoles of uh, nitrate. So, this is very useful for our system because in aquaponic system, um, we have a very high content of salt. In our case, is seawater. So uh, we, we can manage from 25 to 30 or more gram per liters of salt. But the problem is that the, the nitrate content uh, is low respect to the plant requirements, but unfortunately uh, rises up and is high for the fish uh, life. In fact, uh, fish can tolerate up to 400 milligrams per, lit per liter of nitrates, uh, maybe more, but it's better not to, um, to go over this limit for toxic uh, reason against fish, S but for for plant this concentration of ni uh, nitrates are quite low. Um, in experiment three, uh, uh, anyhow, we uh, we tested the production, the yield of the plant, and the uptake, the daily uh, uptake of nitrogen uh, induced by the cultivation of plants. As you can see, uh, the, the daily nitrogen, nitrogen uptake is quite low, we, we might say. That is 0 0.22 um, gram per square meter per day. It means that you need a large surface of cultivated crop to extract all the nitrogen inserted by the, the fish excreta. So, uh, the conclusion is that um, the density of the crop might, uh, might reach 100 plants per square meters. Uh, you need a progressive uh, adaptation to salt content before putting the plant in the system, uh, at least 7 or 14 days uh, uh, increasing the salinity. Uh, and the best uh, species uh, are Beta vulgaris, Chicla in autumn, winter, and Salicornia in spring uh, and summer. Um, so, um, let me tell you something very briefly. I know it's quite long, but we did a lot of experiments um, about the fish farming, and we tested the muscle, the, the replacement um, uh, of feed. Um, uh, uh, opted by mussels. So, so the mussel feed replacement. Uh, so we start. We uh, tried to test the replacement of commercial feed uh, by mussels, and so uh, fresh chopped mussels, and that were kindly um, provided by a, a local um, seafood um, seller that is Arby, uh, and its association named Blue Resolution. We thank a lot of them. Um, so we tested six different diets, 
uh, you can see the, the ratio uh, from 100 to 0 percent of each comp component. And we, of course, the parameters uh, we measured were feed conversion rate, daily growth rate, and specific growth rate. And the results uh, are this one. Uh, the initial body weights of the six um, uh, test, the, the six um, uh, different tanks we, we tested uh, were this one. So the final results were covariated uh, for initial body weight. And as you can see, the final body weight of the intermediate uh, diets were uh, in some, can you see them? Um, were uh, statistically um, significant respect to the um, complete commercial diet, or even better, respect to the complete muscle diet. So um, maybe um, Baldassare Fronte can tell something more about that. Uh, this is the feed conversion rate uh, of, of the six diet tested, and it, it's a, uh, it was a very good value, around 1.1. And uh, so, uh, the, the conclusion of, the, of experiment one was that mixed diets positively influenced the fish growth performances. And there is a slight growth that is minus 11% when uh, artificial feed was totally replaced by mussels. Uh, the experiment we are running now uh, is um, a feed replacement uh, 50% of feed and 50% of uh, a mix of mussels and clam, so a mixture of mussel and clam. Uh, in the next trials, we will add polycates also. Uh, we will do so um, a, a test like the one I, I spoke um, previously, and, but the, we are doing the test, so we have no results at the moment. Uh, but uh, the main issue is to produce polycates. So we set up um, a polycate facility uh, that is uh, a small scale experimental facility for reproducing um, polycates, uh, so um, a breeding and feeding polycates. In experimental um, with the, the polycates, the goal were to determine if spawning can be induced. Uh, to polycates uh, outside their breeding season under laboratory conditions, and if lunar cycle um, can induce an synchronous spawning, and uh, it, uh, of course the right time to sample larvae from the sand to to harvest them from sand. So uh, in this experiment. Uh, it, it, a thermal shock was applied to simulate uh, the, this passage between seasons uh, and the moonlight was applied. Um, as you can see from uh, the results, from numbers, uh, the, the both thermal shock uh, with moonlight um, application uh, positively affected uh, the, the synchronization of reproduction and also um, uh, so the, the possibility to, to breed um, polycates in, in a laboratory condition, so um, it's a con control condition. Uh, here you can see the polycates and the dimension uh, going from uh, less than five millimeters up to 10 millimeters after uh, 42 or 56 uh, days. So in conclusion, the lunar cycle did play an important role in synchronizing uh, the spawning and uh, uh, um, along with the cold shock. Uh, so it's an important result. 
In another experiment, uh, we wanted to determine the growth performance uh, and the survival rate uh, of, of the um, polychaetes in the rice diversity colored, uh, reared on a diet of microalgae and mussel. So uh, we tested, uh, as you can um, read, 100 percent, 75, 50, 25, and 0 percent of microalgae content in the diet. And the results are quite interesting because uh, with a very high content of microalgae, um, we can uh, reach a high yield, uh, high production uh, of the final biomass of, of the worms. And, and it's important because uh, chlorella, that, that is the, the algae we used, is, uh, can be uh, reared in fresh water and it has a very high content of um, proteins, lipids and polyunsaturated fatty acids. It is uh, quite important uh, for uh, the, the, the diet of fish, of course. Uh, about the, um, the production of algae in the system system, uh, as I mentioned before, uh, uh, they, they constitute feed rich in fatty acids, especially in omega-3. Uh, so we can find uh, those omega-3 in the deposit filter feeders organisms uh, that are used as feed for fish. Um, and also the microalgae perform a bioremediation of wastewater. So the, the runoff from other um, greenhouse crop, uh, crops cultivations uh, can be used to, um, to cultivate uh, the microalgae. So um, in lab, uh, it was, the microalgae were um, grown and then uh, displaced um, in the photobioreactors in the greenhouse that you can see in this picture. So very briefly, we can see the, uh, the growth of the microalgae uh, in, in, in the sterile condition and controlled temperature with light, uh, also with the control light conditions. And so um, the, the microalgae were two strains of chlorella and so, uh, as I told in advance, it's very important because you can find easily chlorella in the environment and it, uh, so it's a very common microalgae. Uh, unfortunately, in our system, uh, in the greenhouse, uh, we, we run the experiment from September to December and the production uh, of of the photobioreactor was quite low. It was around 0.2 gram per liter, but in the laboratory it reached three grams per liter, the concentration, uh, the biomass, the dry biomass content. So, but there were no significant differences between uh, the two cultures in, in terms of nitrogen and, and carbon content. So, uh, thank you very much for your attention. Um, please, if you have questions that I can answer, I will do. Otherwise, I will ask my colleagues to answer you. Uh, here you can see all, all the team that he is working on this project in Pisa. Thank you very much. Thank you, Carlo. I check if... Uh, uh... Someone uh, is going to ask a question. No, apparently no. It was clear. Thank you, Carlo. So now is the is is the time for our friend in Turkey with the activity performed at Antalya, at Metpri. Please, Mehmet. Hello, everyone. I would like to uh, say welcome. Uh, I hope you are uh, you are all doing well uh, in these hard days. Uh, 
I give a, a short description of the uh, project objectives, the, the SIMTAP system installed in Turkey and uh, its related uh, progresses. Presentation uh, content includes uh, the titles, the description of marine aquaculture in Turkey, SIMTAP concept in Turkey, description of SIMTAP prototype, studies completed, uh, and next studies. You know, uh, you know that Turkey is one of the leading actors of uh, aquaculture originated fin fish sadly of Europe, especially in Rainbow Throat, uh, European sea bass, and uh, Jiltel Sibri. Uh, total uh, aquaculture production reached uh, 373,000 ton uh, in uh, 2018, uh, sorry, uh, 2019. Uh, both marine and fresh water uh, pr uh, production uh, showed a similar growth trend uh, during the past 30 years. However, uh, as a result of huge offshore cage installations and opening the new zones, uh, marine aquaculture production significantly uh, increased uh, during the last half decade. Uh, although there is a fast growth of beaver aquaculture in recent years in Turkey, uh, marine aquaculture uh, is mainly based on cage culture of European sea bass uh, and jilted sea bream. Uh, in uh, in in, 19, uh, in 2019, uh, 19, uh, production there's two species, species represented about two types of to total production. Uh, a total uh, 434 farms uh, are actually in progress, although there are uh, a few. Uh, earthen ponds, marine fish farms are mainly offshore cages. Fingerling uh, of this, uh, this two species uh, are supplied from 27 on land hatcheries located ma mainly aging shores. Uh, all fin fish hatcheries are flow through uh, systems which they use brackish surface and ground waters. Uh, in the present situation, uh, Turkey is self-sufficient country for juvenile supply of European sea bass and jilted sea bream. So, uh, sustainability of these marine hatcheries, fin fish, uh, marine fin fish hatcheries, uh, was uh, the major source of inspiration for the SIMTEP concept in Turkey. Uh, the fact. Uh, marine, uh, marine cage farms have been faced to many of the environmental restrictions during the beginning of century, the, this century. Uh, for a last a few years, marine hatcheries, <laughs> marine hatcheries are fixing uh, uh, governmental authorities' uh, attention due to eutrophication and pollution risk of uh, surf, uh, breakage surface waters and coastal area, as well as uh, groundwater salinization resulted from water withdrawal. Uh, it is an expectation that capacity restriction or installation of recirculation systems will be forced to marine hatcheries uh, in a short term period. In this context, uh, the SIMTAP concept in Turkey uh, may, uh, mainly aimed uh, to test a cost-effective integrated RAS uh, for an indoor SIMTAP prototype under uh, extreme environmental conditions of Mediterranean, including <coughs> sorry, including higher high indoor uh, air uh, temperatures and high water temperatures and high salinities uh, represents 
Eastern, uh, Eastern Mediterranean uh, conditions. Uh, additionally, uh, to test a SIMTAP prototype uh, for onland marine hatcheries uh, as an alternative uh, protection production system uh, and a possibility of utilization, utilization for growth period of European sea bass and jilted, jilted sea prey. So, uh, building construction uh, of the prototype was uh, completed at the end of uh, 2019. Uh, the system installation has completed uh, at uh, the end of March 2020. Uh, however, uh, due to pandemic conditions uh, from the March, the works uh, stopped completely. Uh, the test of system was able to start uh, at the end of the uh, May 2020. Unfortunately, due to breeding period of the uh, species uh, CPS and Sibrim uh, in hatchery, uh, as, uh, which, uh, which was the first step of the prototype test, uh, the finger is about one gram for the adaptation uh, in, in the early stage, early growth stage, was not supplied. Uh, uh, also, there are other compartments of uh, the syntax concept, including uh, halophyte and polychaetes, were not able uh, integrated uh, to, to, to the missed uh, spring period. So, uh, what what were the components of the syntax? Uh, prototype installed in Turkey. Uh, the Sintap system mainly uh, was consist of, consist of uh, five compartments uh, covering, covering <coughs> you know, fish culture unit, uh, polychaete unit, hydroponic unit, microalgae unit, uh, and water recycling, uh, recycling and treatment equipment, uh, a general RAS equipment. Uh, I will try to describe the system with a diagrammatic representation. <laughs> the system is fed by the full strength uh, seawater uh, with a salinity about 40 per thousand uh, from the Eastern Mediterranean Sea. The seawater was uh, first filtered through uh, a particle filter and then disinfected by UV in radiation. U, uh, yes, UV uh, irradiation uh, and then uh, ozone in injection. Uh, disinfected seawater is pumped uh, into fish tanks through a, an additional UV in, in disinfection system uh, and degassing column. Uh, fish rearing. Uh, uh, fish roaring unit consists of four round polyester tank uh, with capacity of each five cubic meters. The fish tanks are designed to have dual drain. Uh, the outflow of the fish tanks is directly piped uh, by gravity, gravity into two modified radial flow settler. Uh, solid sphere manually flushed uh, once, a, uh, once a day uh, from the bottom of the settlers. Uh, top of uh, top flow of the uh, settlers was gravitationally discharged to a settling tank. Overflow of filtered effluent was drained to biofilter uh, following a protein skimmer. Uh, the biological filtration was provided uh, by a moving bed uh, bioreactor uh, in a rectangular tank with a total volume of uh, one and a half uh, cubic meters. Uh, Filled with, uh, with polypropylene biocarrier uh, 
uh, have a surface area in bulk of 500 square meter per cubic meters. Finally, uh, the water uh, water circulation is completed with discharge of uh, moving bed reactor uh, into pump uh, pump sump. The uh, fish culture. The fish culture unit was uh, successfully integrated with recirculation equipment uh, and the rearing period, uh, an experimental rearing period was completed uh, in the prototype. Uh, Polycat unit was fed by flushing of the bottom of radial flow settlers, uh, but the integration was not able to complete it yet. Uh, mainly due, due to uh, survival of uh, supplied uh, specimens. The hydrophonic uh, unit was fed by filter outflow with the hydraulic residence time uh, of two hours. Uh, we, we, completed, uh, we completed the integration uh, of uh, hydroponic uh, in, into RAS. Uh, however, uh, uh, because, uh, however, since the, uh, since uh, we missed the uh, sitting period uh, of salicornia, unfortunately, unfortunately uh, we can uh, cannot grow uh, sufficiently. Microalgae unit was intermittently uh, fed fed uh, intermittently fed by backwash of protein skimmer through and uh, the aerobic digestion uh, and disinfection the integration was completed but studies were able not start yet under this condition uh, a fifth study was completed uh, a report on biofilter filter conditioning uh, was one of the them. Uh, test of syntax prototype started uh, started up uh, June 2020. The concentration uh, of ammonia nitrogen uh, was increased to five milligram milligram nitrogen per liter in whole system uh, with addition uh, ammonia uh, ammonia chloride. Uh, a commercial mixture of selected bacteri bacterial uh, cultures uh, was inoculated into bioreactor uh, on fifth uh, day. Uh, and additional ammonium chloride supplementation were repeated uh, in various days. Uh, European sea bass and jilted sea bream were stocked at a density uh, seven kilogram per uh, uh, cubic meters uh, and about uh, nine 9.5 kilogram uh, per cubic meter respectively uh, on the uh, seven uh, 79th date uh, bioreactor uh, were monitored daily uh, or every other day, other day uh, for a total uh, 123 days for ammonia, nitrate, and nitrite uh, nitrogen. Uh, additionally, uh, dissolved oxygen, pH, salinity uh, measurement daily uh, was conducted daily. Uh, a sharp decrease in ammonia and a sharp increase in removal efficiency, ammonia removal efficiency, were observed observed for day about four day. Uh, additionally, a sharp increase in nitrate nitrogen on four four day. You, you can see. Uh, and a sharp decrease in remo uh, nitrate uh, removal efficiency in ninth day uh, were observed. Uh, 
uh, nitrate also showed uh, showed an increased increasing trend uh, during fourth day uh, from from about from about eight days uh, which represents nitric decrease also uh, volumetric uh, ammonia removal rate exhibited uh, an increased period which is related mainly uh, increased ammonia concentration uh, the results suggest that the complete acclimatization uh, of nitrifying bacteria merely took the uh, took three months in the Sinta prototype prototype <clears throat> Uh, after uh, these days, unfortunately, <coughs> we uh, collapsed the uh, bacterial biome in the biofilter, and we try to uh, acclimate uh, again. Another experiment. Uh, was on fish growth performance in Simtap prototype in Turkey. Uh, by using the same fish tanks, uh, which uh, which they was uh, they have which they have uh, um, five cubic meters uh, capacity. <coughs> uh, and uh, similar same stocking density, a flow through system was used as a control. Uh, European uh, sea bass uh, and jilt head sea bream uh, were stocked. Uh, uh, fish were fed at predetermined levels based on total biomass in each tank uh, twice a day. Uh, the growth period was uh, carried out for more than five months. During this period, yield had sea bream uh, gained a higher uh, average weight uh, in Simtap prototype than the control, uh, which which was the uh, flutulu uh, system. Uh, uh, the specific growth rate of European sea bass was lower than sea bream in both the control uh, and Simtap prototype. Uh, and statistically significant differences between Sintap prototype and control were detected in specific growth rates for both species, uh, being in lower in Sintap than the control. Uh, a laboratory analyzes the samples, uh, including proximal composition, fatty acid profile, uh, and amino acid profile, uh, are in progress now. Uh, another uh, study uh, is related to dietary inclusion levels uh, of polychate meal in place of fish meal. Uh, a total 20 experimental tank <coughs> with a capacity of uh, 0.5 cubic meters uh, was prepared for uh, the experiment. <coughs> Initial weights of European sea bass and jilted sea bream, uh, which uh, has uh, sea bream were, were 40 gram and uh, 20 gram bar average. Uh, five level of inclusions of polychate meal in place of fish meal. Uh, between uh, the uh, inclusion level uh, between zero uh, and uh, 20 percent. The study was conducted about uh, eight weeks. Uh, as a result, no significant difference between, between the uh, treatment uh, groups uh, for growth. Uh, a laboratory analysis of uh, of the specimens, uh, including uh, same 
proximit analiz analizes fatty acid profile uh, amino acid profile and also uh, oxidative stress parameters are in progress now so finally uh, next studies in the prototype uh, will uh, conduct it on germination seedling and growth of salicornia europe europa in syntop prototype uh, which have uh, which we have uh, higher uh, salinities up to uh, 40%. Uh, sorry, 40. Uh, yes, 40 PPT. Uh, Polychate stocking and growth studies will conduct it. Uh, in uh, this period, microalgae growth in batch same continuous and continuous cultures and their integration to syntax system uh, are the uh, main studies. Uh, our main study uh, will be uh, main studies. Uh, other, also, adaptation period, uh, period to cage transfer will be carried out in European CBAS and GTEL uh, CBRIM uh, will be conducted. Uh, in next month. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Thank you, Mehmet. Good job. Uh, any question uh, to Mehmet? No? So, uh, and I, I provide you some information about the, the, the um, the last uh, prototype to be set up in in Malta uh, for for some reasons also due to the pandemic uh, the construction uh, was delayed and uh, but uh, um, there was a meeting last last uh, in the last few days between uh, our friends in Malta and Carlo and uh, Ubaldo uh, about uh, with, with the company uh, we, who, which is uh, installing uh, uh, the prototype in, in Malta. Um, now is the, is the time uh, for the, the partner at the University of Bologna, Daniele Torregiani and Alberto Barbaresi. Yes. Okay, please take the control of the screen. Okay. Fine. You can see the presentation, yes. Uh, thank you very much, Alberto, and good afternoon, everybody. Um, I'm Daniele Torregiani and of the Agricultural and Biosystems Engineering Group of the University of Bologna. And together with my colleague Alberto Barbaresi, we are going to present you the activities that our group has carried out and is carrying out within the SIMTA project. Activities uh, which are mainly focused on smart systems, energy modeling, and uh, geospatial technologies uh, to increase efficiency, sustainability, and implementation of SIMTAP. First of all, uh, let me welcome you to the University of Bologna. The Alma Mater Studiorum University of Bologna is the oldest university in the Western world and at the same time is always aiming at addressing new challenges in education and research. With our academic and technical staff of about 6,000 people, our 32 departments covering all disciplines, we are the first university in Italy for the number of disciplines ranked in the top 100 of the QS World University Rankings, with more than 140 million euros from Horizon 2020 live programs, etc., and more than 400 European projects funded, of course, including projects under the Prima program. Our university ranks first in Italy in the Societal Challenges program with excellent results in the agri-food topics, thanks to the key role played by our Department of Agriculture and Food Sciences, which is in the top 50 of the QS World University ranking and has been awarded as Excellence Department by the Italian Ministry of University and Research. Being the biggest department with more than 250 academic and technical staff, 
We cover all scientific disciplines in the agri-food production chain and have been successfully attracting funds from competitive calls with more than 33 million euros only in the last three, year, three years. This is our uh, agricultural and biosystems engineering group, the structures and environment research team. Our activities focus on the design of smart and agri-food structures and systems to improve sustainability, traceability and safety, on precision livestock farming systems, uh, also on energy modeling and renewable energies in agri-food and livestock sectors, also on multi-criteria land suitability and site suitability analysis. And we also use machine learning and big data applied to the agri-food sector and also on planning of rural per urban, urban areas also by means of natural based solutions. Now, basically we are going to see the uh, activities carried out by the University of Bologna team in the Sinta project. Of course, we will provide, we'll provide you with a short summary and uh, would like to uh, reply to all your questions. Basically, our group is mainly leading the tasks you see here highlighted. Uh, so uh, the first task is about the realization of a smart monitoring and control system for the Sinta pilots. Uh, this task is now completed and the systems uh, will allow to collect important data for our project and for the project implementation, as we will see later. The other two tasks, uh, the one aimed at assessing the energy uh, efficiency of the system and optimizing the energy consumption, and also the task aimed at defining uh, the suitable regions and optimal locations uh, for the Sinta plants uh, uh, over, let's say, across the Mediterranean area have been activated recently and basically will be developed in the second half of the project. Uh, we will give you some more information about uh, the, these two tasks in the last part of the presentation. But now let's focus on the uh, first task, uh, which is about uh, the development and test of an integrated smart monitoring and control system, which we have called ISMAX, to be implemented in the SIMTA plans. Uh, first of all, why a smart system for the SIMTAP uh, pilots? Basically, uh, because uh, the SIMTAP project must, first of all, rely on a good balance among the different modules of the system uh, and also among the various species which uh, they host uh, and also with the surrounding environments. And also the SIMTAP plants must be able to work in different environmental conditions across the Mediterranean area and also in different production cycles and different configurations of the production cycle itself. Therefore, the SIMTAP systems need a continuous and accurate monitoring of manifold metrics in different matrices. Um, also, the previous presentations uh, have clearly showed that it's very important to constantly check and keep monitored the the main environmental parameters for, let's say, the good functioning on the system and, of course, a good performance in terms of production. Of course, we all know that ICT and IoT also, the Internet of Things, can be, bring many benefits to the agri-food sector. Because basically, if we develop very, let's say, specific and optimized IoT and ICT systems for the agri-food sector, we can allow, first of all, an efficient management of the production process, so uh, being it an agricultural or livestock uh, process. And in the case of the SINTA project, it's basically a mix of them. Uh, we can also achieve an, uh, a food safety and traceability because we can keep track of every condition of the, uh, let's say, environmental conditions of the production process. And also we can uh, allow an increase in the sustainability and also in animal welfare because uh, Dr. Oben was showing us the importance of keeping, uh, let's say, under control some key parental, uh, sorry, some key uh, environmental parameter also for animal welfare. 
and for animal production. And this can have positive impacts on the market, of course, in the end, also because of the increasing awareness of the consumers that we all uh, know. Well, basically, uh, our smart monitoring system has been specifically designed and conceived for the SIMTA pilots. Um, this system allows to monitor and store, so both in real time and for, let's say, um, control later on, both the parameters about the external environment and the parameters about the internal environment of production. About what? Basically about the air and water environments, because of course we deal both with air and water environments, uh, where algae, crops and fish are uh, grown, but also about energy performances of the cultivation systems. Uh, and this aspect of monitoring the energy consumption is particularly important, uh, in particular in the cases uh, of controlled environments. So where the SIMTA pilots uh, are hosted in uh, controlled environments, which can somehow assure uh, to produce uh, all year round, basically. But energy consumption is a key aspect that needs to be studied and optimized. Our system allows to collect data in real time uh, and store them, and they are accessible offline also for offline controls from any location. So basically, um, our system, our smart monitoring system, on the one hand, has been designed for the development and test of the modules of the SIMTA project, so of all the pilots that are installed in the different countries, during our experimental trials of the projects. So basically to support all the experimental trials that all the partners are carrying out in the project. But at the same time, our system is able to, let's say, en enable uh, various applications in future commercial exploitations of the SIMTAP cultivation systems, which may be uh, about parts of the system or the entire system as we have heard about in the introduction uh, today. Uh, in fact, the smart monitoring and control system allows both to trace in continuous the conditions for animal and crop growth, also optimizing human operations, but at the same time, it allows to increase the reliability of the system. For example, it allows to prevent system failures uh, also sending uh, early alerts. At the same time, it allows to produce data for research throughout the research project duration. These data are necessary for the analysis of the performance of production of all the species involved in the SIMTA project in relation to the environmental conditions, of course, and also to analyze and improve the energy efficiency, and this will be developed in the next months, and also for the overall sustainability assessment, which is also included in the project, as our colleagues will tell you later. Uh, so let's say it contributes both to the uh, experimental goals of the research project and to facilitate the future commercial exploitation of the results. Well, now I would like to leave the floor to Alberto Barbaresi, who will present you more in detail the activities for the development of our smart monitoring system, which basically has been divided into four uh, steps, which you can see here, which are study and research, design, prototype development, and validation. Please, Alberto, the floor is yours. Yeah. Thank you, Daniele. Good afternoon, everybody. So, uh, So, sorry, do you hear me right now? Okay. Yes. So now, now uh, I'm going to explain more in detail, more in the technical detail, what we did to create our ISMAX, our smart uh, and monitoring control system. So first of all, uh, the first uh, part was a study and research. In fact, uh, such a system uh, does not exist on the market. So we had to build uh, exactly in to make in the most suitable way, and we had we did it in a continuous contact with other partners. So 
we started to uh, talk to them and they um, uh, ask them their uh, um, opinion, their need, and then we had uh, uh, a continuous feedback with them, and then we iteratively res- uh, revised and fine-tuned the system. To do that, we have to take in, into consideration the specific characteristic of the experimental site. In fact, in fact, I want to remind you that we that the Syntap are installed in four um, uh, places in Europe in completely different minor environment. We are close to the ocean on one side. We are exactly in the middle of the Mediterranean Sea. We are in uh, inland in, in uh, Pisa. We are in a, a, in a completely different environment in Turkey. So it was completely is a very uh, challenging issue. And we have also to consider that besides the differences in experimental sites, we had a lot of difference in the activities that uh, our partner wanted to conduct. So we uh, tried, we had, to, we wanted to, uh, at the end, we aimed at creating an efficient and cost-effective solution that is able to measuring outdoor and indoor data, and of course, is should be able to managing and remotely send the data in real time. This for several reasons, because we, we want that everybody can see results. Uh, uh, I mean, every partner can uh, see the results uh, of the uh, other. We, we can have a, an, immediate ch- an immediate check. And as my colleague told before, we need also to start to um, uh, uh, plan to, um, to, to set alert to, for um, uh, some problematic that can rise in these uh, systems. So. What we have to do, we designed the, the, um, the system that is able to measure in different uh, metrics, uh, different metrics in different matrices. So we consider the, the environmental. Uh, so we, we create a sort of a weather station that is able to uh, measure temperature, relative humidity, pressure, wind, and the luminance. Then we created a, a sort of station, a water station, so it can measure the dissolved oxygen, the pH, and the uh, electrical uh, conductivity. Then we created another uh, part of the system specifically for the plants, so uh, it can uh, um, measure the temperature, the relative humidity of the air, the CO2 concentration, and also the PPR. And finally, if considering that we want to assess the uh, sustainability and uh, the energy efficiency, we also um, created the part that is able to uh, read the energy uh, the consumption and also the p- the power peaks, but also we have to. The, another challenge was that we uh, um, are in a salty environment, in breakage water, so it is in salty envi- environment. So we had to create something that is very resistant to environmental condition, and uh, as I told before, that has to record data and make it accessible in real time in this completely different environment. Moreover, we had to create something that is energy efficient, energy efficient. So we had to, 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 to create something that is uh, as much as possible energy self-sufficient and should be flexible. Flexible because we expect that during these three years of uh, <clears throat> project, we expect that some need can change, some needs can be added, and maybe some better sensor, the sensors that can be found. And so we want to integrate and substitute. So all these uh, to to make all this to achieve all these uh, aims, we created uh, these ISMAX. First of all, creating a um, a local part and the cloud part. So a local and, re- and remote part. The local part is installed physically in the uh, in the location of the same tab. Instead, the, the cloud part is in our university. We had a specific server, and we have also a cloud. Um, uh, that is, it works for the partners to uh, allow them to uh, take the data and also as a backup to avoid the risk of uh, data uh, loss. And then both of them work in the application. Instead, on the other side, on the local part, we have our sensor. The sensor are uh, wirely plugged to nodes. These are these boxes. The, these boxes, they are called nodes, communicate with the LoRa connection to the gateway, and the gateway is the only node that is internet connected. So is the uh, gateway, actually, the gate that is able to communicate to the cloud and to the server. In this way, we uh, created uh, a net of sensors that can be 
um, as much wide as, as, as possible, but the inter we need just one internet connection. So in this way, we are going to reduce the cost of uh, connection and we can create uh, a system that is spread even in hundreds or even kilometers. So uh, more precisely, everything is around the node. To make it flexible, we create one node that is able to um, manage and handle all the sensors I explained to you before. To do that, we created this small box. This small box is able to, uh, to be uh, uh, powered by the electrical grid, but also by a photovoltaic panel. Then as inside the power management with batteries, and then as a, a, a small capacity of data elaboration and data uh, memory, because if we have some uh, inter, uh, like some uh, signal uh, loss, uh, we can you can store a little bit uh, uh, of uh, data. And then we created a, uh, we we um, placed inside all the most common interfaces, so every kind, almost every kind of sensor can be plugged in uh, this node. Then this node is a, can be uh, directly connected with the wire, as we can see here, to sensors, but also to actuators. So if we need to control something, we can uh, simply plug the, our controller here. Um, the technology is very is very uh, easy. Is we can see also Raspberry board. And we start, uh, when we wanted to build our prototype, we tested uh, his performance. First of all, we realized that uh, the en energy is self-sufficient in open environment and greenhouse. In fact, we installed the first uh, prototype in the middle of June um, in outdoor environment and is still running without any uh, need of charge. And then we tried to uh, see the maximum distance for the connection between the node and the gateway. And in very particular good condition, we see, we see that they can transmit uh, the signal even seven kilometers far from the gateway. So node and gateway can be in this particular condition, we can say seven kilometers far, but in normal condition, we expect they perfectly work in one or even two kilometers far. Uh, and we didn't see any, um, we tested also to the salty environment and we, di we didn't see any uh, decay in uh, hardware or in uh, software parts. So uh, to explain better, I make a, a collection here of picture. As you can see here, starting from this one, you can see that we created three different, I mean, the same nodes, but all the nodes are made for different purposes. Even here, we can see a fourth purposes is a sort of weather station. This one is for water. This one is for the, the, the plant. And so, as you can see here, is the same node with uh, different sensors making a, a different um, uh, metric uh, station. Uh, beside this, we had to find the most suitable uh, um, sensors. So we started to, call, to, to test different sensors to measure the same thing. And when we found the optimal solution, which we uh, placed it in the water, in the real environment, and we started to test. We started to test and to uh, compare the measurement with other, um, uh, with other um, sensors that are already calibrated. Uh, as you can see here. And this one in the, la in the latter uh, picture is uh, the version that doesn't need the photovoltaic panel because it can be, as I told you before, even connected to the uh, electric grid. Uh, then he, we, we created, uh, um, using the cloud, a web interface that allows uh, every partner that when is uh, installed in the site to first of all to see immediately what is happening in real time our uh, time step of collection is between 10 and 5 minutes so it, it, we can see uh, even right now we we are able to see what happened in uh, pisa not longer than 5 minutes ago and we can see all the metrics uh, i i told you before for example here we can see the wind uh, the wind speed and the wind direction and here we can see the pH and uh, water temperature and salinity. And uh, then the last part was the validation. 
because of course we created something that is homemade and we have to be sure considering the um, the, the, the perfect balance that this system need we had to, to be sure that our um, sensors record in a proper way so we start uh, for example here i can show you the example what we did with the co2 to validate the co2 so we took the our ismax and a, a calibrated in a commercial sensor and we used it as reference so as you can see here in this situation we have a, a, almost a complete overlap between the instrument and our reference uh, in considering also uh, 400 uh, uh, part per million uh, up to one uh, sixteen hundred uh, parts per million. So we, we also tested in a wide range. Uh, then after that, we took the differences and are, uh, we assess the difference according to the precision that is required by the project. So we created a specific indicator to, uh, to test and to validate our measurements. These indicators gives a precise number that allows to define the reliability of the sensor, eventual correction and the compensations. So I leave again the, the, the floor to yes. Daniele. Just a quick overview of the next steps. Of the next steps. Um, in the next months, we will continue working on the tasks which have been activated recently. Uh, I mentioned them before. Uh, so basically, one is about the um, analysis and improvement of energy efficiency. So uh, we will identify the key issues in energy consumption and basically in climatic control. Uh, we will identify the best solutions to improve the energy efficiency. And uh, we will also create a kind of strategy for the future installations. And also, uh, we will work on the task which is aimed at defining the, uh, let's say, optimal locations for SIMTA pilots. Uh, and basically, we will develop a GIS-based decision support system aimed at facilitating the implementation of the SIMTA pilots and the future plans in different Mediterranean contexts. Uh, we will do it uh, based on multi-criteria spatial analysis in GIS environment. And to do it, we will consider many georeference databases and sources, uh, as you can see here. But basically, we will focus, for example, on fish farming companies, locations, other agricultural, agricultural activities, also on resource and energy availability, and also other kinds of infrastructure availability. Of course, on the different environmental conditions, on topographic and the climatic data, and of course on constraints and legal frameworks which may impact on the real implementation of SIMTA plans. So before closing our presentation, I would just like to say a special thank to all the colleagues. Uh, it has always been a pleasure to work with you. And also uh, we will look forward to working on the next steps with you as well. And of course, a special thanks goes to Professor Pardossi and uh, Professor Bibiani and to all the group of the University of Pisa for coordinating the project and doing such a huge and excellent work. So thank you very much for your kind attention. Thank you, Daniele, and thank you, Alberto. You are very, very nice and very kind. And uh, also thanks to all the speakers for uh, allowed to stay in, in, the, in the fixed uh, timetable. So uh, there is a room for one or two questions before the coffee break. I can see no hand up. Hello, Rainer. <laughs> OK. There's a question I see, uh, one hand left. One I, red can, I can see the, the hand. Oh, OK, I, I found. OK, please. Hello from Turkey, from Ankara. From Ankara University. My name is Argument Genç. Thank you for your presentation. And also, I would like to thank uh, Mehmet and uh, Alberto and the other project team. Just I want to ask like this Will it be able to um, measure 
like uh, ammonia values of the water. I mean, uh, your real time uh, measurement, um, some uh, instruments can be able to measure ammonia uh, or nitrogen or nitrate values beside the general uh, standard um, water quality parameters. Thank you very much. And I would like to uh, say, uh, I hope uh, you will able to finalize your project uh, with successful way. I, I can answer. So uh, that the answer is not yet, because it's exactly what now we want to make the, the next step uh, that uh, is uh, uh, to make also to, to measure the water quality. So now, first of all, we had to uh, we um, uh, use all our resources to monitor the environment. After that, we can so uh, now, but is uh, even out of the project is uh, really moved by our our curiosity our need to do something better. So what we want to do is to make it even able to measure um, water quality. It's not as easy, but as I told before, we uh, left room exactly to implement. So in this way, even if we found a good sensor that we can implement, it will be very easy to add even to existing system. So we just need to go, for example, to uh, Pisa, I don't say other other uh, uh, countries because of uh, the restriction of the COVID, but it will be very easy to go to Pisa and edit in one existing node the sensor. So uh, so far we didn't do that, but it's exactly what we want to do uh, in the next step: the water quality. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, may I add something, Alberto? Yes. Uh, thank you very much for your appreciation, Professor. Uh, I don't remember the pronunciation. Gang. Yeah, uh, it, it sounds like argument, but argument. Uh, my name is Argument. Argument, actually. Argument. It, it, it's <laughs> okay. difficult. I know pronunciation uh, is difficult. Just you can say uh, just Argu. Enough. Argument. Okay. Uh, well, your question posed a very tough task because as you know it's very difficult to measure uh, nitrates and nitrates in the water so uh, we, we we don't um, uh, we don't have enough uh, uh, money and it's not in the project to develop a special sensor for uh, measuring nitrates and nitrates but I, I, I have heard of projects doing that, uh, and hopefully they will be successful. <laughs> uh, as you know, there are colorimetric uh, devices that are the most promising, because otherwise you have to use a chemical, um, chemical process that is not feasible um, in real time. <laughs> So, but it's a good question because the nit nitrates and nitrates are really important uh, for living uh, living organisms. So, that's a good question. Thank you very much. Yeah, but just because, as you know, that the sector and also all the uh, stakeholders needs the, actually these values. Uh, yes. That's why I just ask. Uh, I, I, my specification, not electronic or uh, other uh, instruments, but uh, one day I hope uh, you will uh, invite this um, in instruments. Just I hope. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, our experience with the ion specific sensor is not very happy. Uh, because they are very expensive, they uh, need the frequent calibration, uh, there are a lot of interferences, and uh, it could be a bottleneck for, for a complete uh, automatic monitoring of the system. And uh, also the, the presence of uh, high salinity, and in particular the high concentration of chloride, is, is the main, uh, the main um, uh, uh, point to, to be considered uh, to develop uh, um, ion sensor for uh, marina aquaponics. 
Thank you anyway for your contribution. If I In can add a comment, Alberto, just a second. Uh, since we are talking about potential, let's say, follow-ups and future developments of our project, because of course we are still running the project, but we already look forward to the next steps. Uh, I think that, for example, since we also uh, used to work in the precision livestock farming sector, uh, for example, a future follow-up may also be to, uh, be to include some, let's say, real-time monitoring of the growth of both plants and fish, for example. And that's something we already discussed, but of course, uh, we can't cannot put everything in a project so but i think it, it may also be another interesting challenge for the future yeah. okay thank you I, I think that we may have a break and a short break virtual okay. coffee see virtual coffee sorry <laughs> <laughs> so say yeah. that uh, we see again in 10 minutes is okay to you okay okay, okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Hi, Joanne. How are you? Oh, fine. <laughs> fine, fine. Interesting afternoon. <laughs> <clears throat> okay. Okay. Buonasera, Fiori. Finalmente la... <laughs> Incontro di persona è un parolone, eh? <laughs> Buonasera a voi. Good evening to everyone. Thank you very much for uh, your participation. Okay, uh, Creed, uh, sorry, I, I think we can start again with the second session, which will be shorter than the first one, also because uh, 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 is devoted to some work packages of the project, which uh, uh, has started only recently, or they did not start yet. Okay. The two speakers are uh, Joel Obin, which who is the first, the first one, and then uh, Jacopo Bassinetti, uh, Bassinetti at the University of uh, Milan. Are you ready, Joel? Yes, I okay. am. Can you see something? Yes. So uh, this new presentation is has been built uh, jointly with uh, Jacopo Bacinetti. So we will we will share the the floor uh, in this presentation. Um, so the subject is the general approach and methodology for the assessment of uh, simtat sustainability. Um, when we are talking about sustainable development, for sure we have to choose diff uh, among the different uh, uh, the different definition of the sustainable development. So we can consider uh, if we if we if we base our thinking about the, on the Brundtland report in 1987. Sorry, that uh, uh, your presentation disappeared. I think. Really? I no, no, I can see. Okay. So it's my my computer. Sorry, sorry, Joel. Okay. So, but tell me if there's a problem. So we can define sustainable development as a development that meets the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. Nevertheless, uh, it's difficult when you consider all the sustainable development goals of the new, the United Nations, for instance, to to take this into account in the sustainability in a, in the producing system such as aquaculture system of, or our uh, aquaculture syntap system. So the, one of our questions is how to guide aquaculture systems towards sustainability. And one of the of the main proposal that is used generally is that a way to con it's a way is conducting a sustainability assessment to guide the improvement of the system. But conducting a sustainability assessment faces many challenges. Uh, first, you have to bring together multiple stakeholders' point of view, with, which have different levels of knowledge. So 
per, the first step is to define common objective uh, to assess the sustainability. And this is facing methodological issues because you have to define goals, the system, the system boundaries, the measurements, and all of these have methodological issues. One of the ways to define indicators, and there are different kinds of indicators, quantitative, economical, qualitative, etc. So there is a need to build a conceptual framework and choose uh, the assessment method. For the conceptual uh, framework, what do I under, what do what do I want to say behind this? It's associated to the to the scheme that you have on on the right hand. Uh, it is the organization of the different concepts into the assessment of of the sustainability. You have the dimension of the sustainability develop uh, sustainable development, such as social environment and economy, as it is usually done, uh, that can be divided into criteria and indicators that are um, that, uh, that uh, have to uh, give values to the criteria. So, and about the assessment methods, uh, one of the one of the most common way to do it is to use multi-criteria decision analysis. So what is, what is multi-criteria decision analysis? It's objective to aim to take into account and to take account of multiple criteria in helping, in helping individuals or groups to explore decisions that matter. That is the, the, the official definition. It helps to integrate uh, objective uh, measurement with value judgment using quantitative, quantitative or qualitative indicators and makes explicit and manage subjective, subjectivity through the organized intervention of concerned people. And it aims to face problems of aggregation and weighting in the organization of indicators and criteria. So for, to do this, there are different methods. Uh, okay, and, depend, and uh, they are associated to different theories. You, you have simple weighted sums of uh, values of indicators. You have outranking out methods. You have multi-attribute utility theory methods, etc. In our project, we chose to, to use the DEXI approach uh, to, to build the, this multi-criteria decision analysis. So DEXI method, it's uh, DEX it means decision expert. It's, it has been created in 1979 and used in, in various areas such as economy, finance, agriculture, tourism, etc. It is a multi-criteria decision modeling and support, and the DEXI has three key characteristics. There are it is hierarchical, it is qualitative, and it is rule-based. And it is supported by an open access software you can have on an internet. Uh, this is the DEXI, uh, DEXI software. Okay, so what is the principle of the, of the DEXI model? You, you start by a large question that is the overall sustainability, which is a real complex problem. And uh, as we, as it is a qualitative approach, you can you can determine if this overall sustainability can be high, very high, uh, medium, low, or very low, for instance. From this complex problem, you can make a decomposition of this uh, between um, among among the sustainability dimensions. So. So you can you can define uh, sustainability dimensions such as economic sustainability, social sustainability, and environmental sustainability, and you can decide to weight differently uh, di this different uh, sustainability dimension. Here we chose to have the same weight of of these three uh, dimensions. Then you will divide it into less complex sub problems that we can define as principles. 
And for this also, you can, you can choose to make different weight into this uh, DEXI attribute, uh, this principle. And you can choose here for economic sustainability if you have two principles to, to put 60% on 40% as weight between these principles. And then you will have, you will going on to, to divide your problems into more and more ones, more and more simple ones. Uh, and you will define criteria and then indicators that will, that will be uh, measured and uh, feed, uh, that will be fed by input data. And this input data can be information that you will, you will gather uh, on field, for instance, water consumption, number of species, etc. for our problem. Okay. The other principles is that the input data are derived from the concept, contextual, technical, technical, economic, and social data. It can be estimated by calculation, by models, by experimental results. And by our side, we decided that it will be based also on life cycle assessment, emerging accounting, life cycle costing, and social LCA that we will discuss just after. Uh, the input data are scored on a qualitative scale using a threshold value. That means that all the, the, the data we will, will be transformed into scores, such as high, medium, and low, or classes, uh, just as uh, present here, uh, 15 is less than 20, etc. So this is a way to reach the qualitative scale. And then, all these are aggregated into uh, through the utility functions, and the utility functions uh, will determine the importance of each basic uh, attribute on the upper ones. It, this is explained in the table uh, just on, on right. You see, the utility function will be if economic sustainability is very low and social sustainability is very low and uh, uh, environmental sustainability is very low, the overall sustainability will be considered as very low. But if you have economic sustainability as medium, social sustainability as high and environmental sustainability as very high, you will consider it as high. So this is the utility function and you will have to find this at its at each level of the of, of the of the Dexi model. So what did we do? Uh, I take the opportunity to thank all the partners of the of the of the Syntac project because uh, they all participated to to this huge and complex uh, work, and it was really nice to do it uh, all together. So first, we started by a lit literature review. From this one, we, we extracted 413 indicators about sustainability of aquaculture systems. From this one, we made a first version of the sustainability assessment tree. And to, to, to build and confirm that, uh, we made online surveys with the participants of the project. So there were 25 participants from uh, France, Italy, Malta, Turkey, Germany. And from this survey, we, we selected five, 57 uh, relevant indicators. And from that, we reviewed the version of the sustainability assessment tree with new surveys and online meetings. And then we defined thresholds, values, threshold values and weights for each attribute of the tree, for each branch of the tree. Then we computerized the version of the sustainability assessment method, and we created a template to be able to calculate the indicators. And all of this is included into the DEXI software. So to feed the, the indicators and the attributes in the, uh, in the DEXI model, 
uh, we use different kind of data, technical data, input output, environmental data, social data, technical data, uh, etc. That were gathered in life cycle uh, assessment and emergency accounting. We will explain you what what it will be: social LCA, life cycle costing, and other kind of indicators. And from these. We can, we could have some indicators such as global warming uh, potential, eutrophication, emerging yield ratio, gender e equality uh, for for uh, full time employment, growth value added, net present value, fish in fish out ratio, etc. So, from from the raw information, we had indicators, and these were aggregated into environmental indicators economic indicators and social indicators to, to make the overall sustainability. So I give the floor to, to Jacopo, who will explain to you the life cycle domain. Thank you, Joel. Good afternoon to everyone. So as uh, explained before, different uh, methods will be used to, to assess the different indicator for the global sustainability. And uh, with regard to the environmental performance, the life cycle assessment approach will be applied. LCA is defined by us. It's a uh, two method for the quantification of the environmental impact, the potential environmental impact, and it is uh, specified by two specific ISO standard. LCA is able to assess the potential environmental impact for a functional unit that is the, a measurable unit that uh, better express the function provided by the system. So in case of uh, SIMTAP could be the amount of fish and vegetable produced. And for the SIMS, for the system, we have to consider uh, all the input and all the output. Uh, about the output, we have to consider, of course, the production of useful uh, products, but also the emission of pollutants uh, and other uh, gas and uh, nitrogen and phosphorus compound. Uh, coming, uh, going a bit more in detail about uh, LCA application to the SIMTAP system, here we have the, uh, the system, the SIMTAP system, up scheme and uh, we can see that uh, we will collect and uh, we are we are collecting some details about the input so raw material uh, production feed chemicals juveniles and uh, seedlings uh, needed required for the for the system energy consumption water consumption while from the output side we have the, of course, production products and co-products, but, but also emission to the environment and the waste production. So all this information will be analyzed, mainly using uh, specific software for the life cycle assessment in order to identify and to quantify a list of environmental indicators that uh, will be used in the in the DEXI methods to assess the environmental uh, performance of uh, the SIMTA system. For the economic performance of the SIMTA system, we will uh, use the life cycle cost uh, methods that it's quite similar to LCA because it's uh, based uh, again on input and the output. The output will be the same and uh, as a we can see in the in the slide also the the input the, are more or less the same than for LCA, but uh, there are additional information about the subsidy, the cost uh, for manpower, and so on. Again, all the input and the output, the information about the output, such as the price uh, and the amount of the different products, will be used to assess some indicator of uh, the economic performance uh, of the SIMTAP system, so the net present value, the payback timing, the internal rate of return, and uh, also the gross added value. Coming uh, to the performance, to the social performance uh, of SIMTAP, uh, the social life cycle assessment will be applied. Despite uh, a similar name uh, with the LCA, the social life cycle assessment, it's 
quite different because, uh, first of all, because the method is still under development and it's a, it is more qualitative in respect to LCA. With the social life cycle assessment, we will be able to uh, identify the social impact of symptom system for the different affected stakeholders, so worker, local community, and also animals. So we can see that uh, the input data are uh, a mix between uh, the data used for the environmental and uh, the economic aspect, but there are also specific uh, data about the, the, the syntax system, so, and in particular to the animal, to the fish, that are considered a uh, specific stakeholder. All the data collected will be used to identify sub-indicator that are like the uh, impact categories evaluated in the, uh, in the, with the LCA. The sub-indicator will be then uh, quantified using a scoring principle that it's uh, like the one, uh, it's really similar to the one explained before by Joel. And at the end, we will be able to identify the social hotspot. So the, the area related to the social dimension in which the SIMTAP is uh, sustainable or can be improved. Thank you. Okay, and the last, the last uh, method that will, be, that, that will be used in our, in our project is the emergy accounting. Uh, it refers to the energy. Uh, the energy is the ability to cause the work. It, we know potential energy and available energy. Uh, and there are many forms of, the, uh, of energy to produce something. For instance, to produce fish, you need sun, you need light from the sun, you need rain, you need soil, you need machine, you need different kinds of inputs, you, and you need services. The idea of energy is that it is the energy required directly and indirectly to make something. And it's expressed in, uh, in the same form of energy, which is solar energy. The unit is solar energy joules. So the idea is to, as to, to aggregate all this kind of energy into a, 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 single, a single measurement. But from this, you can propose different indicators because you will have ratios between what is um, renewable energy and not, uh, energy from nature and energy from the human activity, etc. This will help to to assess the sustainability. So this is a picture of one of of the branch about environmental sustainability that we built all together with the, all the partners of the of the project. I will not present this, but it's to show you uh, that. There are three brands like this one, because this one is only environmental, but there is one for social and one for uh, um, economic uh, sustainability. And you can see that you have at the end of the branch, the indicators, for instance, on the top, the right top, you have health cost per kilogram of biomass produced. You have, this is associated to the chemical and contaminant emissions, and this is associated to negative local impact uh, on the system and the objective behind is to reduce the negative impact on the ecosystem so you see the complexity of what we have built but we have an, an, an overall assessment of the of the system with this to to prove to illustrate what what it can give okay we made uh, an application on the salmon uh, recirculating aquaculture system because we add uh, the values in a, in a previous uh, uh, study. So just to present it, it's a, it's a recirculating uh, aquaculture system in large tanks and it produces salmon in France. Okay, so you have some details here. And so we applied all the methodology to this system to look at the, the, the relevance of what we obtained. What did we obtain? So we, we, had, we had different scores in sustainability branch on environment, economy, and social. For environment, the score is medium. For economy, it's high, and social, it's low. And when you look at the sub-branches, 
you see that the objective to reduce negative impact on ecosystem is high. The respect on natural resource availability is medium. Increase, alors, because for, for um, typically because it uses a high level of fish meal and fish oil in the, in the feed. So this is one of the reasons that we have this score. The increase in the ecological efficiency of the activity is medium because in one hand, it has a good uh, food conversion ratio because it was very low, but it uses uh, um, resources for, from, uh, from human activity. So it was not good, etc. And you see for economy, you see that the production efficiency was medium and the viability was high, but in social, the relationship with other actors is, was very low because the, the, the farm was really functioning without links uh, with the neighborhood. Uh, the employment and working condition were quantified as medium. The meeting social expectation were medium and the contribution to local development was very low. Okay, so you can make this uh, scheme like this one with the, the level in environment, economy, and social. So this is just to, to present you the kind of information we, we can have. And from this, you can see where you can improve your, your system. So what are the perspective for this work? So the main perspective is the application and the adaptation to the different setup cases study um, in, in France, in Italy, in Malta, and in Turkey. Uh, this application will also be conducted uh, on, on reference aquaculture system in the different countries. Uh, the idea is to have an overall analysis of the sustainable hotspots in aquaculture system and uh, to improve also the DEXI model. We will have a general discussion on the crossing of the different approach, the DEXI, but LCA, life cycle coasting, social LCA and Emergy. And uh, with, uh, at the end, we will make available the tools uh, for other users and uh, other projects. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much. Very, very nice presentation, very clear. I think that uh, at the end of the presentation, uh, it should be clear to the audience uh, the, the complexity of the project. We want not only to prove the principle of a SYNTAP um, uh, approach to fish and plant production, but also the methodology uh, we are going to use to assess the um, economical, environmental, and also social sustainability. I want uh, to thank uh, especially Jacopo because uh, Jacopo is in a very <laughs> particular situation because uh, notwithstanding uh, the, the project that was approved uh, uh, more than two years ago and the kickoff meeting was uh, held uh, nearly two years ago, uh, he didn't receive any funds. Uh, Prima project, uh, um, at least in the section two, has uh, a particular funding schema. Uh, each partner receive or should receive the request and approve the funds from their own national funding entity. And unfortunately, this entity in Italy is the Ministry of University and Research. And uh, today, the Free Italian University has not signed yet the grant agreement with the ministry. This means that not uh, uh, you, uh, the University of Pisa and Bologna received some advanced uh, funds from uh, uh, their own university because of the rectors. But this is not the case for Jacopo. So Jacopo is doing his job without any euro. And this is almost unbelievable. And this situation is not only for the Sinta project, but for all the projects, um, uh, for all the project uh, approved in 2018. So almost three years ago. 
Uh, this is because uh, a very long and complex uh, procedure provided by the, our uh, ministry and the, the pandemic for sure did not help to, to find the, the way, but in this moment, the Jacopo has no users. And this is a problem also for the postdoc who were going to work on the project. And this, uh, and, and I have also to thank Prima, the Prima Foundation or Prima Foundation for the support to press uh, our ministry to uh, sign the grant agreement because the signature of the grant ag agreement could be enough for Jacobo to receive some fund from the university. But without uh, this kind of contract, the, 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 the rules uh, laid, da laid down by the University of Milan did not allow to provide Jacobo with any euro, really yeah, any euro. And this is, is quite, uh, I, I mean, unbelievable. Uh, said so, <laughs> said so, uh, I will open uh, the, the, the general discussion uh, by introducing to all the audience three members of the advisory board of the project, who are um, Dr. Biagio Di Mauro. If I, he should be in the audience, I have seen the yes, name. Yes, I'm here, Roberto. Okay. Uh, ciao, Biagio. Uh, Dr. Marco Fiori. <clears throat> and Dr. Good evening. Uh, good evening. Uh, thank you for your participation. And Dr. Klaus Ernike from Germany. Uh, the other two members, Dr. Emanuel Roche uh, Dorbach Or Castel and Professor Tufan Erol Dogan, uh, cannot uh, attend the meeting. They wrote a, a message to me. And uh, the advisory board is the, 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 the body uh, that in principle should uh, evaluate the, the work and the job performed by the partners day by day. This means a month by month or year by year. It could be enough. Uh, and um, and thank you. Uh, I, I thanks all the members of the advisory board for accepting our invitation to stay in the in the in the board. Uh, say so. Uh, I open the discussion. Uh, I invite the the, the participant to ask questions to the speaker to myself, uh, of course, and uh, and also to express their comments and also criticism to to the work we have done or we are going to do in the next few months. Thank you. I understand that uh, on Friday afternoon uh, is, is not the best uh, time, no? To, to find something to discuss. Uh, I have a question. Yes, Chingoi? Yeah, yeah Chingoi here. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so my Please, question uh, is... Anyone should introduce uh, him or herself. Chingoi <laughs> is uh, our postdoc. <laughs> okay, I am I am a postdoc working in the University of Pisa, and I'm taking care of the filter feeders and the uh, uh, worms. Um, so my question is for Joel. I I have a query. Like in your prototype, it's like you use uh, the waste materials from the fish pond to the uh, filter feeders. So it's the prawns and the oysters. So I would like to know if you made any calculations like this much of organic matter or particulate organic matter will be enough for this much of biomass of the filter feeders. Is there any calculations or uh, how did you proceed it? So thank you for the question. It's it's really relevant. Um, OK. We, we made rough calculation at the beginning uh, of what could be the emissions from the fish. And uh, we make a rough calculation of what could be used by the 
by the, the, the filter feeders. Uh, but uh, the filter feeders will use mainly uh, phytoplankton mm -hmm. and, uh, and the suspended solid, the part of the suspended solid. And it is very difficult to know which part of what they will use. So one of our um, uh, projects for, for this year is to start a kind of modeling to, to be able to equilibrate what's coming from the different uh, traffic compartments uh, in, in, the, in the system. Moreover, um, we made some samples to make uh, uh, the analysis of uh, isotopes, of natural, natural isotopes of nitrogen and carbon uh, in the different species. And from this, we hope we will be able uh, to calculate uh, from which compartment of from which source the different species uh, fed. Um, okay, yeah, this is the main part, and I was also like uh, thinking about this uh, particular field, like how much and uh, what to give them, because of course they they feed on phytoplankton, but in the system it's like. We never know actually or accurately how much it will be there. OK, thank you. Thank you, Joel. Welcome. I just would like to make a, a consideration uh, if I can. <laughs> yeah, yes. So I'm uh, first of all, uh, I'm Marco Fiori. Head of uh, Fish Purchasing Department for Copitalia. So, uh, as you know, the big retailers and aquaculture companies are moving towards sustainability, traceability, and, anim and then animal welfare. So, I think that the SIMTAP um, system touched to all these uh, topics. So I just want to say congratulations because uh, you didn't forget anything. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Other comment or question? Daniele. I see you are going to 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 tell something. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Uh, no, no, nothing in particular. But maybe no. Uh, I just uh, commented before that, and you have highlighted clearly, Alberto, that uh, um, let's say Simta pro the Simta project. I think has a lot of uh, let's say aims and goals and uh, potential strategic impacts because. Uh, basically, we are all together working to demonstrate a principle, so to demonstrate the feasibility and the possibility to balance such a complex system, because it's a complex system. Uh, I think that one strength uh, of the project will be that anyway, uh, the results of the project will be able to provide uh, new inputs for the future of, let's say, aquaculture and in general integrated systems, because I think that uh, the project will be able to contribute both in specific parts, so modules and parts, and also with new knowledge, let's say, bringing all the modules together. Um, and uh, Dr. Fiori was very nice in saying that we did not forget anything uh, probably it, it was not possible to include really everything, but at least we are trying to experiment in many directions, the different topics. And uh, I'm pretty sure that in the end, uh, we will have new food for thoughts for future applications, for future research, but uh, for sure something useful will come out for research, knowledge and real applications in the real world, I guess. Thank you, Daniele. Yes, Rainer. 
Microphone, Rainer. Switch on the, the microphone. Uh, there is also Fabrice uh, Dressalange. Yeah. With land. Uh, I can I cannot see the hand. Anyway. Ryan should uh, switch on the, the microphone. In, in, in the meanwhile, uh, Fabrice uh, is allowed to, to speak. <laughs> Please, uh, Fabrice. Thank you, Alberto. I will, <laughs> I will be quick. I, I, I just want to, to congratulate you because I, I'm, I'm very happy to, to have uh, seen all these uh, advancements you had in your project. It has been repeated. I would not uh, repeat again, but that's true. You are touching like all the, the almost all the, the very important uh, things like economic impact, social impact, environmental impact. Um, also, from a personal point of view, I'm an animal ecologist and I really, really appreciate the, the the approach you have on your project because you are trying to to play with this um, trophic uh, interaction to have uh, to reconstitute a kind of ecosystem that can work um, almost out autonomously. So I'm I'm very very pleased to to see this kind of uh, of project. And moreover, you, you have achieved a lot of things in uh, in one year and a half, two years. You already have prototypes working, and uh, this is very very encouraging uh, for for you and for us because in Prima, I'm sorry I didn't uh, introduce myself, but uh, I'm Fabrice Dantresangle and I'm the project officer in Prima, who is in charge of the farming system area and uh, who is in charge of monitoring this project. And um, since the beginning, I have a lot of curiosity about your project because I've also been working in a, in a lab as postdoc and they were working with fish but with another approach. I was a behavioral ecologist so they were uh, looking at the communication of, uh, with, with fish among fish and um, you, you also mentioned this point that is uh, for me very important uh, animal welfare because fish and uh, generally are, are not considered uh, very sensitive animals and all these kind of things. And we, I really believe there is a lot of uh, work to do also on that. And of course, in a more uh, general way, we all know that uh, the, um, the practices in aquaculture and fisheries are not sustainable. So we really need to find uh, alternative system and uh, eco-friendly practices, and I really believe you you are on a very good track. So this was my word. I, I just want to to congratulate you because from my point of view, you you are doing uh, very well. And even if um, I know they are, you have problems with the with the Italians funding. I I apologize with that. We are uh, unfortunately uh, very aware of this situation. Uh, we try to push in any way we can. Unfortunately, the money is national and we cannot sign the contract uh, instead of your ministry. So we're aware, uh, we, I can just uh, apologize for that. We, we, we try to work on that. Uh, all the, the board of trustee, the, the Prima Foundation is trying to push very hard the, this point and we hope there will be a solution soon. So I, I would stop here. I don't want to take much of uh, your time, but uh, again, congratulations because uh, you are doing a very nice job. Can you hear me now? Yeah, thank you. Yes, right. Thank you, Fabrice. Uh, we, we didn't know about uh, your background. <laughs> <laughs> Only okay, one thank you very much. Only one please, short Please, Reiner, please. Yes, one short comment, because I'm discussing with European Investment Bank, uh, also with the president and with one of his um, directors about our project. And the key issue will be for the next years, the Paris Agreement. Our government has a calculation that the costs for one ton CO2 will have to rise from 25 or 50 as today to 175 in 2030. This means it has to triple. This means that all transport costs 
that um, diesel for ships in the sea, that all climatizations and heating and uh, uh, production of industry fodder will be very expensive if the CO2 um, uh, papers have to be paid. And the big chance of our project is that we have with our circuit production, with reduced uh, transport costs, with uh, many other possibilities we will have to check during the next years, we will be, I think, much better prepared than other market players uh, can be prepared because they are depending on uh, on petrol, on diesel, on uh, on all the production of uh, fodder. I think uh, this is, if we keep that in mind, uh, we see the real value of the project. Because uh, the pressure to to follow the Paris Agreement will politically be enormous in the next years. <laughs> Thank you very much for Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Carlo, take the yes, chair. I'm here. <laughs> last, uh, the last few minutes. Yeah, okay. Thank you very much. I really appreciated all your presentation and they give a complete and clear um, uh, vis uh, visual of our project and what we are doing. Uh, I think the, the challenges are very, very tough <laughs> uh, because uh, recirculating aquaculture system are very sensitive uh, systems to be uh, run, run uh, in, in a commercial way. And so uh, the waste, waste is produced by fish are really relevant in quantity and in um, chemical contents. Yeah. So uh, the, the idea is to take care of the wastes and in some way, in some way, um, reuse all the wastes, even if not in the same cycle, but the coupling, uh, the, the subsystems, we can make a useful um, use <laughs> of, of, of the waste is in, in a multitrophic chain. That's the key point of, of the project. And besides, the production of microalgae um, can cope with the scarcity of fish oil and uh, the omega-3 polyunsaturated fatty acids. Uh, so um, uh, really, Replace, replacing uh, this um, very, very um, impact uh, making uh, component of, of the fish fodder. Because, you know, fisheries are exploiting at a very high level all the, the, uh, the fish in the wild. So uh, there is a, a really, a, a real need to find uh, alternative sources of components for fish feed. But this is not my topic, of course. I'm just uh, doing a resume <laughs> of the project. So we, we should produce enough microalgae to feed intermediate uh, organisms yeah. that can produce biomass feeding fish. That's uh, what, what I think that is a, a, good, a good point, uh, um, a start point for the next future. Thank you, Carlo. Don't forget nitrates. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Alberto, may I add uh, one yeah. last thing? Sure, for sure. Uh, just I would like to highlight what uh, Reiner said. I am I totally agree with his uh, view about about that. It's uh, obvious our our system uh, right now is not at all commercially competitive. If, if the cost of production uh, of syntap system or other uh, multitrophic system 
have to compete with the conventional, with the actual production, of course we are uh, uh, losers. But since uh, they produce uh, a huge uh, uh, quantity of uh, carbons, and these carbons in the in the future cannot be produced anymore, and they have to pay a bill for the carbon production. At that point, we might be uh, competitive. So uh, at, at the moment, we are not ready to to compete with them. But we have to be uh, uh, we have to prepare ourselves, and this approach should be ready uh, to to compete in ten years, let's say. So we have to work hard to be ready in 10 years to have a, a production, uh, whatever is the cost, because in the future, the cost of the production as it is, uh, the system production, the, and the, 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 the production system we have uh, nowadays will be absolutely unsustainable. So we need an alternative, which will be still costly, costly more costly than this one, but at least sustainable. So, Totally agree with the, with what said uh, uh, Reiner, and uh, I think this is uh, one of the most important, uh, 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 let's say, goal. Our 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 assist, our project and similar project have to take a, take into account. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. I think that uh, uh, I cannot see any any hand up. Uh, so I I think if you agree, we can uh, close the webinar. And uh, also because uh, most of the audience disappear. And uh, I will. Uh, uh, provide you by email uh, the the link to the video registration of the the webinar or the the presentation. And uh, again, I want to thank all of you, and uh, special thanks to the to the speakers and to the members of the advisory board. I wish you a good weekend, and uh, we hope uh, all uh, we all hope to. Uh, find a way to exit from the, not from yes. Brexit, from, from the pandemic. But uh, unfortunately, I think that uh, for, for, the, for this year, probably the only opportunity to meet each other uh, will be the, the web, apart from some uh, short travel uh, to, to, uh, for some installation. And uh, so, uh, I thank you uh, again. Uh, I please Daniele and Carlo to to remain a little bit uh, in the on, on Teams, and uh, and so thank you again. Uh, have a good uh, night, a good weekend, and the best wishes to all of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. See you soon. Thank bye you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye bye.